when I was sitting in front of white people and they thought, I, I wouldn't thought you would like Trump because of the racism. So you mean to tell me I make every decision based off my color. The most racist thing a person could tell me is that I'm supposed to choose something based on my race. You have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump and you ain't black. Come on. First, <laughs> after So my point is, look at what they value and look at their budget and what they're proposing. Romney wants to let the, he said in the first 100 days, he's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Come on. First, after <laughs> So my point is. Coalition. I come out of the black community in terms of my support. If you notice, I have more people supporting me in the black community that have announced for me because they know me. They know who I am. Three former chairs of the Black Caucus, the only African-American woman that ever been elected to the United States Senate, a whole range of people. No, my point no, is, that's not true. The other that's one not is true. here. <laughs> no, I said the first. Thank I said the first African-American elected. First, so my point is, Senator Harris has said that it contributed to mass incarceration. Why is it uh, uh, Vice President Biden admitting what we're hearing from the former president? Well, look, I think what we can go back to Vice President Biden's comments at the National Action Network breakfast in January, where he noted um, that the, the, the crime bill, by way of this disparity between crack and powder cocaine, trapped an entire generation of people. Look, I think many people will tell you across the country, Victor, black folks included, um, that, the, that the crime bill and the reaction to what was happening in the early 90s, now look, I, wasn't, I was only about three or four, but I'm a student of history. What was happening in the early 90s, um, the reaction was an overcorrection to a very real issue. But we are going to see some policy rollouts from um, our campaign very soon, Victor. I know folks have questions so, about so, uh, what uh, is Vice President Biden's criminal but, uh, justice is, policy. Is it, is it now and the, the, those are going to come. Now but I mean, the, campaign's the campaign's position that the crime bill did contribute to mass incarceration? <laughs> Victor, I think the vice, with the vi the vice president, uh, his comments speak for themselves. Every time Richard Nixon, when I was running in 1972, would say law and order, the Democratic mantra, the response was law and order with justice, whatever that meant. And I'd say lock the SOBs up. Come on. First, <laughs> after you. So my point is. What is very well, clear his, is But his this, comment that was that it does not contribute to mass incarceration. The former president who signed his, it said and, it and did. If we, and if, look, Victor, if we play the whole clip, what he also said was, his comment was, what he also said was, that the majority of folks that are incarcerated were incarcerated at the state level. And there's and a reason for that. Let me put up, let me put up the truth and sentencing and incentives there, and there, here. And I mean, there is a reason but for that. But there's a reason. Let me put it up. I mean, let me put, just, it, put it up on the screen, guys, the truth and sentencing section of the 1994 crime bill. This is page 21. It incentivized... Uh, it offered billions of dollars to build new uh, correctional facilities if states would increase the percentage of convicted violent offenders, increase the average prison time, increase the percentage of the sentence was there. Did this bill not incentivize putting more people in jail and keeping them there longer? The, uh, Victor. I no, I am not going to sit here and tell you the crime bill was perfect. Come first, <laughs> after you. So my point is. Another thing about how uh, perspectives change over time. Bobby Rush, member of Congress, said the other day, I'm ashamed that I voted for the 94 crime bill. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Um, and in fact, I drafted the bill, as you remember. I know that. You stood up and used that tough on crime, phony rhetoric. That, that bill was a huge mistake. Th there's no question that that crime bill uh, contributed to America's mass incarceration problem. 1994 crime bill, we had a gigantic epidemic in America of violence, particularly in African-American communities. Come First, <laughs> after So my point is, the consensus is, A, we must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social, uh, become socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, 
take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Come First, on. after <laughs> So my point is. Poor kids are just as talented to Lou as white kids. Um, you know, the distinction there is there are poor whites, and, and you know, it, 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 how do you think that plays there? A gaffe, something more than that, a window to his soul, what do you see? Uh, it's definitely a gaffe, and Joe Biden has a long record of making gaffes, so I don't think this one will stand out on, on that long record. There's a second thing that we all have agreed upon, and that is unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized, they literally have not had an opportunity. We should focus on them now, not out of a liberal instinct for love, brother, and humanity, although I think that's a good instinct, but for simple, pragmatic reasons. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets that society has, in fact, in part because of its neglect, created. Again, it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Beyond the pale. Come First, on. after <laughs> So my point is... And if you take a look at my record as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, uh, excuse me, of the Judiciary Committee, ranking member, chairman for 16 years, and started with the Voting Rights Act and worked its way right through to, a, to uh, voting against constitutional amendments on busing when busing was taking place in my state. My credentials are as good as anyone who's ever run for president of the United States on civil rights. Chapter receiving fresh scrutiny comes from his earliest years in the Senate, when he strongly opposed mandatory school busing. It was designed to achieve integration and a more equitable education. It was the mid-1970s. Biden favored desegregation, but not through busing. What's less known is how he followed the lead of some of the Senate's most fervent segregationists. In a series of never-before-published letters reviewed by CNN, the strength of Biden's opposition to busing comes into sharper focus. On March 25, 1977, Biden wrote, My bill strikes at the heart of the injustice of court-ordered busing. It prohibits the federal courts from disrupting our educational system. Biden sought and received support from Mississippi Senator James Eastland, the Democratic chairman of the Judiciary Committee and a leading symbol of Southern resistance to desegregation. He frequently spoke of blacks as, quote, an inferior race. Biden reflected on that era earlier this year. There are a bunch of racists. You know, there was, you know, James O. East of Mississippi, Strom Thurmond, and so on. Uh, there were nine guys in, who were in the caucus that were, you know, I ran against in the civil rights movement. But he did not say that Eastland and others were partners on several of Biden's anti-busing bills. On June 30th, 1977, Biden wrote, Dear Mr. Chairman, I want you to know that I very much appreciate your help during this week's committee meeting in attempting to bring my anti-busing legislation to a vote. Then in 1978, Biden again asked Eastland to put his anti-busing bill before the full Senate, writing, Your participation in floor debate would be welcomed. Four decades later, after building a strong civil rights record, Biden stands by his opposition to busing, arguing it did not address institutional racism. Most busing programs in America were later abandoned after bringing more hardship than equal opportunity to all students. Come on. First, after <laughs> So my point is... I know Joe. We know Joe. But most importantly, Joe knows us. That's right. That's right. That's important. We have no choice but to take them out of society. And the truth is, we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point. That's the sad truth. You're looking at the fellow who was one of the primary architects of the Sentencing Commission. You know what the basic premise of the Sentencing Commission is? I know the presiding officer knows. It was the first time in 80 years we rejected the notion that the condition of sentencing must be related to how long it would take to rehabilitate. 
I'm the guy that said rehabilitation. When it occurs, we don't understand it and notice it. And when we, even when we notice it and we know it occurs, we don't know why. So you cannot make rehabilitation a condition for release. That's why in our system, there's the federal system, you serve 85% of your time. I remember when it was going on, when I was making these arguments in the late 70s, they used to call it Biden's same time for the same crime provision. It's a shame, but we don't know how to rehabilitate. But there is a consensus, and I will cease. A, we must make the streets safer. I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society. I don't care why someone is antisocial. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change their behavior. That's why we do in this bill. We have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it. But they are in jail. Away from my mother, your husband, our families. But we would be, being, we would be absolutely stupid as a society if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist and we must deal with that and I think there's a consensus among Republicans in that old barbed wire Republican conservatives must want to hang them high Come first on. After <laughs> so my point is what are you saying that this represents this underscores as far as the vice president is concerned it's a divisive tactic that's insulting to African Americans it's insulting to the American people. It's an insult to the legacy that he used to build up as an orator who knew how to inspire people instead of strike fear in people's hearts. And it ought to embarrass President Obama. I've worked with Joe Biden. I've seen his leadership. Uh, I have absolutely no doubt uh, about what is in his heart and the commitment that he's made uh, with respect to racial equality in this country. So uh, I, I will provide some testimony, as they say in church. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, that, that Joe is, is on the right side of the issues and, and is fighting every day for a better America. The allegation that important legislators and legislators in defeating the Nunez plan in the basement said, quote, we already have a nigger mayor, we don't need any more nigger big shots. Come on. First, <laughs> after, so my point is... What was the one or two issues that most disappointed you or surprised you as far as President Obama is concerned and caused you to leave his, to leave his side? Wolf, I have to tell you, I don't have to go any further than 24 hours ago. Uh, when I heard the Vice President of the United States, someone I grew up admiring, someone I've been on platforms with, when I heard him go to Danville, Virginia, and talk about politics in a way that no serious candidate ought to talk about it, when I heard him reach the bottom of the deck and talk about one party putting people in chains, when I heard someone that I admired and have been on platforms with talk about uh, ordinary conservative principles as being essentially racial uh, viciousness, because that's the allegation he was making yesterday, uh, I was disappointed by it, but I have to tell you it brought back memories to me. It brought back memories of these Democratic politicians in the South who think they can go before black crowds and say one thing, that nobody else will hear it, and that they can somehow get a cheer in the room and that they can blithely go on about their business. That's not the way you can do politics anymore because of the media. And I think Vice President Biden, I hope Vice President Biden, learned an important lesson. You can't say one thing to a certain kind of people thinking nobody else is hearing you. Yes, and by the way, what you all know, but most people don't know, unlike the African-American community, with notable exceptions, the Latino community is an incredibly diverse community. Come first, <laughs> after So my point is... Uh, would you like to respond to Joe Biden, who today described you, you might have heard that, as the first racist to be elected president? That's, those are his, that was his words. Well, you know, it's interesting because we did criminal justice reform. We passed criminal justice reform, something that Obama and Biden were unable to do. Uh, we did uh, opportunity cities. We did the greatest, if, if you look at what we've done with opportunity zones, uh, nobody's ever even thought of a plan like that. Uh, Prior to the China plague coming in, floating in, coming into our country and really uh, doing terrible things all over the world, doing terrible things, we had the best African-American, Hispanic-American, Asian-American, almost every group 
was the best for unemployment. The unemployment numbers were the best. Uh, you look at — so you look at employment, you look at opportunity zones, and maybe most importantly, you look at criminal justice reform, you look at prison reform. I've done things that nobody else — and I've said this, and I say it openly, and not a lot of people dispute it — I've done more for black Americans than anybody, with the possible exception of Abraham Lincoln. Nobody has even been close. Thank you very much, everybody.